Hi LEGO fans! It's a Muppet Show with very special guest star, me! Yes, it's collectible minifigure blind bag feeling time again, and I just got a sealed box of 36 random minifigure Muppet blind bags. It's time to play the music, it's time to light the lights. Because today, I'm going to teach you my system for feeling out every Muppet minifigure with no duplicates, no disappointment, and no wasted money. Forget bump codes, they haven't worked for years, and those numbers on the back of the packs do not reveal the character inside. There's only one way to reveal the secret, and that's by feeling out what's inside the bag. We have 12 classic Muppet Show characters to collect, and I'll teach you how to identify each one like a pro. We do of course have the most well-known Muppet, Kermit the Frog, and on-again, off-again violent love interest, Miss Piggy. Adding a little science to the mix is Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, and faithful but accident-prone assistant, Beaker. Me, 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 me! Also included is resident comedian, Fozzy Bear, Waka Waka Waka, and the unclassifiable Gonzo, aka Gonzo the Great. No variety show would be complete without a cookery segment, and it's utterly brilliant that LEGO included the Swedish chef in the lineup. Bork, bork, bork! Turning to the musical lineup, we have resident pianist Ralph the Dog, and from Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, lead guitarist and vocalist Janice. But completely outshining the rest of the band, Animal Play Drums! This guy talks too much, get to the LEGO already! And of course, cantankerous heckling duo, Statler and Waldorf. Feeling what's inside Muppet minifigure blind bags is super easy. There are 12 to collect and each comes with unique parts revealing their identities. Key to success is knowing what you're feeling for. I print off a list with the characters I need. Photos help you to visualise what you're feeling inside the bag. And a printed sheet is a great way to check off the characters you've already found. Because nobody needs two Janices. Like wow. Each random blind bag sells for 5 US dollars. 4 euros or 3 pounds 50. So trying to find a set by grabbing random bags gets expensive very fast. When you buy a whole box of minifigures, it often arrives in the original shipping case. Lego seems to have changed the design to save on packaging and weight. When I flipped it upside down, I thought part of the box was missing, but this is how it's meant to be. I guess we'd better follow the instructions. First we're going to lift up this flap and then push this in whatever that did. Next we spin it around and then we've got another one of these tabs and I guess it should just lift off now. There we go. I'm actually really impressed at what LEGO has done here. Usually the retail display boxes have a flap which forms the lid. As you can see here that is completely gone. Inside the box it's business as usual. There's a cardboard divider in the middle which keeps the two rows of minifigures apart. And instead of having a complete outer box, we get this brown cardboard lid which protects the inner. Judging by recent releases, there should be 3 sets of 12 inside this sealed box of 36. When I'm feeling blind bags, I'm looking for unique elements that identify the character. Kermit's banjo is a great example as it's distinctive and unique to the character. When you're faced with a bunch of seemingly identical blind bags, it can be intimidating, but stay cool and remember the rules. Feel for distinctive elements, take your time and always consult the sheet. I'm going to feel every blind bag in the box and explain what's inside the bag. Once I've identified the character, I'll open the bag to prove the system works. Then we'll get the fancy macro lens out for a closer look at each minifigure. This will be a long video so I'll be adding chapters to help you quickly get to the characters you're interested in. Ok so let's get started with the Muppets, and the great thing about bag number 1 is that it's guaranteed not to be a duplicate. To help you visualise what I'm feeling inside the bag, I'm going to put a picture up here somewhere uh, which will show you the Muppet and hopefully give you a sense of what I'm doing. So I'm going to have a quick feel around inside the bag first of all. Uh, immediately I can feel the, the, uh, the paper leaflet that's inside, those are really useful. Um, no seriously, they are very useful. And then we've got a two, uh, what is this, a 3x4 base plate with the studs on. That's uh, inside all of these bags, not very useful for identifying the character. Uh, there is a pair of legs. And then what do we have here? We have... What is that? Um, that feels like a stud. Okay, I can't visualise which character has a stud inside the bag. So let's uh, continuing. Let's continue to feel around. Oh, now we have a round piece. That feels like the base to a microphone stand. 
Um, let's see what else we got. Maybe the base door microphone stand. Oh, but then I feel something that feels like, oh. In fact, I think I've just broken this apart. These feel like Harry Potter wands on a piece of sprue, which could mean this is animal. Um, because animal comes with a pair of drumsticks. Yeah, you see he's got these drumsticks here. He's also got this round piece, which I thought was the base from Fozzie's microphone. Uh, that is a symbol for his drums. So we should be able to find some uh, some drum parts in here. And yeah, so I've got a round piece with studs on it. That's definitely part of the drums. And a, I think we've got a, that feels like a chunky piece of headgear. That's gonna be Animal's head. And then let me see if I can find the one thing which I'm looking for, which is, it's a it's a round piece. Ah, there we go, thick, chunky, round piece. That's actually gonna be the piece that makes up the bass drum that Animal plays. So, yep, great minifigure to start with. This is gonna be Animal. So let's cut this open. Uh, there are no capes inside this series, so hopefully we're not gonna be cutting at any minifigure parts. And what we should see is a flash of red. All right, brilliant. So uh, we'll take a look at this a little bit more closely, but um, yeah, what I've got here is um, basically a set of Harry Potter wands, which are gonna be the drumsticks. I've already kind of taken these off the sprue by feeling it inside the bag. Uh, but these are the pieces you wanna be feeling for, the round pieces. So we've got this big chunky piece for the bass drum. Uh, really nice uh, metallic gold piece for the symbol. Don't confuse that with the base for Fozzie stand. And then one of these smaller round pieces. But then we also get yeah, a bunch of stuff here. We've got a, a really nice uh, printed round tile uh, and all the bits and pieces that put the drums together. But then we of course have the fantastic animal. I shall put this fantastic creature together and we shall take a closer look at him. Well, what an utterly fantastic way to start this LEGO Muppets blind bag feeling video. This is of course a legend that is ANIMAL! ANIMAL! Animal is of course the drummer who performs with Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. He has three styles of music, loud, louder and deafening. BEAT DRUMS! BEAT DRUMS! To help him perform magic on the drums, he comes with a pair of drumsticks which may look familiar. These are actually a pair of Harry Potter wands. Animal also comes with a drum kit which provides quite a few useful elements to feel inside the bag. The most useful is the large round element which makes up the bass drum. You could also feel for this small round dish, just don't confuse it with the base of Fozzie's microphone. It comes in a really nice metallic gold colour and is very symbolic of Animal. The front of the bass drum is decorated with a round printed tile. This shows the famous teeth of Dr. Teeth himself, complete with gold tooth. Completing the setup, we find a snare drum on top of the kit. A number of elements are included to attach the cymbal and the snare drum to the bass drum. These are also pretty useful for feeling out inside the bag. But of course, the star of this blind bag is the main man, Animal himself. Yeah, yeah! I always thought Animal was quite short, but LEGO has given him adult poseable legs. These are dual moulded from orange and brown plastic, and there's printing on the front showing Animal's belt, which is made out of a piece of rope. The torso print is nicely done, and the pattern reminds me of flames. These are outlined with just a little metallic gold printing. The arms, as well as being useful for holding drumsticks, are dual moulded and overprinted. The printed detail is stunning, including some more gold metallics and silver metallics for the spiky bracelets. There's more printing on the back of the torso, including a matching necklace. Now that I look at this, I'm pretty sure that's covered in teeth. But the pièce de résistance is that fantastic head moulding. Lego's ability to produce moulded heads has come along in leaps and bounds. Their ability to apply white ink to said heads is a little less impressive. The head appears to be dual molded from red and black plastic, hence the really nice delineation between the two colours. There's also some really nice printing inside the mouth, but I wouldn't advise you to get too close. One thing we don't see on this character are chains. Going back to the 1975 pilot of The Muppet Show, Animal was chained in a basement cell when not performing with the electric mayhem. Animal is a strong fan favourite from The Muppet Show, and I'm sure will be in high demand. Thankfully, he's really easy to feel out inside the bag, so you should go out and try and find yourself an animal with total confidence. 
Yeah, yeah, animal fuel bags. So one down and 11 more to find. Let's see what we've got in bag number two, which it again is a little bit skinny. I'm always feeling first of all to see if there's any really big elements in here. Not really getting that, but I am getting a lot of air. So let's see what we can find in amongst the air. That's a leaflet. Uh, there's the base plate that he stands on or she or they. Um, I've got some legs here. Those feel like medium poseable legs. Uh, so a little bit shorter. Um, I don't know whether that gives me a clue or not. Although you'll probably find that some of the minifigures, well, there, there will be a difference. Uh, some have long legs, some have short legs, some have medium legs. But this is very interesting. So I've got what feels like a guitar. Could this be Janice or maybe Kermit the Frog? Actually, the uh, guitar feels, yeah, we've got a kind of nodule on the back, a kind of notch on the back there, and then it's round, uh, which feels like a banjo. So I think I may have Kermit the Frog. Uh, let's see. Um, actually, that's a headpiece. Yeah, definitely a headpiece. You can feel where the uh, body goes up inside the head. And uh, you can feel a really good open mouth there, which feels suspiciously like this guy, suspiciously like this guy. Um, what else have we got? We've got the plate again. Torso piece. Now there is one thing that I'm looking for, just to confirm it, because it's always good to have a couple of different ways to confirm these characters. And um, Kermit has a rainbow. I can't remember why he has a rainbow, uh, but let's have a feel around, see if we can find that. And that will confirm that this is Kermit the Frog. Um, where is it? There it is, I think. He... Yes. Okay, so if you take a look at that, we have a curved piece. Uh, it's kind of a quarter circle curved piece. That is gonna be the rainbow. So this is definitely Kermit the Frog. Um, really easy one to find. I've heard that some people have had problems finding Kermit. And that's probably because um, because he's very popular. People have already gone in and felt the bags and uh, figured out which one's Kermit and taken him home. So uh, hopefully you don't have any problems finding Kermit. Certainly you should find it very easy to feel him out. Uh, this is one of the key elements you're going to be looking for. That's a quarter circle uh, kind of rainbow tile, nice and smooth. But the other thing is this really really nice uh, banjo element this is a new element for the set and uh, as you can see you've got this kind of a uh, thing on the back here for the minifigures hands uh, but then yeah really nicely uh, printed we'll take a closer look at that in a second and then finally for Kermit, um we've got the, uh, the head here very distinctive feeling uh, see it's wide open here the mouth so feels a little bit by pac-man but um yeah this is Kermit the frog and we shall get this little guy put together from one iconic muppet we move on to possibly the most iconic muppet kermit the frog kermit is so iconic that his face is actually the logo of the jim henson company jim created and voiced kermit until he died in 1990 age 53. it's at this time he was negotiating to sell the company to disney According to Frank Oz, the stress of negotiating with Disney made him sick and ultimately caused his death. Kermit comes with a couple of accessories which are useful for feeling out inside the bag. The first one is the banjo we see him playing in the swamp in the opening of the Muppet movie from 1976. Feel for the round shape to make sure it's not Janice's guitar. The printed detail is really nice with metallics for the strings. The rainbow is also a very distinctive element. I was struggling to figure out the rainbow connection when I was feeling inside the bag, but then it hit me. The rainbow connection is the song that you hear Kermit singing at the start of the 1976 Muppet movie. This one's for the lovers, the dreamers and me. Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side? As well as playing banjo, Kermit is also well known for introducing the Muppet Show it's a Muppet Show! And waving his arms wildly, shouting, Yay! A technique he learned from his old acting coach, Mr. Dawson. Kermit's legs are the medium poseable type, which I think were first introduced with Harry Potter minifigures. This time we have no overprinting, but we do have some printed detail on the torso, picking out the shape of Kermit's body, and also the iconic decoration around Kermit's neck. 
we see basically the identical thing around the back. I don't know what LEGO does to these torsos in the manufacturing process, but notice how often they come out with imperfections along the bottom. Like the legs, we have no overprinting on the arms, which come in a plain lime green colour. But the most iconic detail of Kermit the Frog is the unmistakable head. If you need any help confirming it's him, then do feel for the large open mouth. Just like being green, it can't be easy to print inside the mouth, but LEGO has managed it and not done a terrible job. I can't honestly be so charitable about the eyes. They look okay from a distance, but really close up, the white is not very good at all. The other imperfection I noticed are some lines across Kermit's face, but I guess when you're knocking on for 50 years old, you're gonna have a few wrinkles. Beyond just being a great minifigure, Kermit has bags and bags of nostalgia. Apart from minor imperfections, I think LEGO has done a really nice job here. Moving out of the swamp and onto our third bag, let's see what we've got inside this little baby. So yeah, leaflet, push that into the corner. That's the base plate, uh, that's no good to us. Let's see what else we can find in here that's distinctive. Uh, that's gonna be a torso piece you can always tell because you can feel the arms and the post where the uh, head slides on. Speaking of the head, oh, that is a chonky, chonky piece of headgear. And I already think I may know who this is. Um, you can actually feel a pair of ears sticking up on top of the head. And um, that would indicate that it may be a certain love interest uh, related to said Kermit the Frog. And um, yeah, actually speaking of that, you see what I'm find, feeling here? We have a two by three tile. And there is only one character in the collection which has this one by three printed tile. Um, and uh, she also happens to have pointy ears. So um, yeah, actually what I'm feeling for, uh, having studied the characters, I know only Miss Piggy has this two by three tile. So yeah, definitely Miss Piggy. Let's prove that the system works as always. And if we open this up, we should see a flash of pink. Hey! Uh, yeah, there we go. So this is the key element you're going to be feeling for. This is the 2x3 printed tile. Really nice, actually. That's got some uh, some either pearlescence or... Yeah, maybe it's just the white showing through. Uh, so we've got a 2x3 two two tile, which guarantees you're going to get Miss Piggy. But then also this fantastic molded head. Uh, looks like it's dual molded out of pink and yellow plastic, uh, but very uh, one of the bigger heads, I would say, from the Muppet characters. But you can actually feel the ears on top. She looks fantastic, so I'm going to get her put together and we shall take a closer look. We all know it's not easy being green, especially when your girlfriend is Miss Piggy. Oh, Kermy! She's a prima donna, absolutely convinced she's destined for stardom, and if she doesn't get it, she'll karate chop you. Hiya! Piggy's break into stardom came after winning the Miss Morgan County Beauty Contest. This helped her get a part in the chorus of The Muppet Show in 1976. Her accessory is this 2x3 tile, which makes her very easy to feel inside the bag. This depicts Miss Piggy on the cover of a magazine, but I don't think this is Muppet Show era. I'm pretty sure barcodes on magazines came a lot later. Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog have a long-term on-again, off-again relationship. I think they would get married, but Miss Piggy is afraid of commitment. Piggy is taller than Kermit and stands on full-size poseable legs. These are dual-molded from pink and flesh-coloured plastic and are overprinted on both the front and the side. She's wearing a pink dress complete with sparkly detail and we get some very nice continuity of the printing from the torso onto the legs. If you angle her to the light, there's some really nice metallic details. In particular, I like the Love Heart decorated belt and the pearls. Miss Piggy stays slim by never eating more than chicken lift. The arms are dual molded and Piggy is wearing purple gloves complete with metallic detail. But making this character quintessentially Miss Piggy, we have a superb molded head. Her long blonde hair is beautifully molded and the ears provide a useful reference point when confirming what you're feeling inside the bag. The likeness to Miss Piggy is absolutely stunning. Lego has absolutely nailed the snout and the mouth. The printed eyes are nicely done, but I can't help feel that mine are a little off center. As is increasingly the case with Lego, the quality control doesn't seem quite right here. 
Notwithstanding, Miss Piggy makes an absolutely brilliant minifigure. Now, if only we could get a Pigs in Space set complete with Captain Link Hogthrob and Dr. Julius Strange Pork. While Kermit and Piggy might not exactly be the perfect couple, a Muppets minifigure set would be incomplete without them. So a great start with three characters found and no duplicates. Let's see what's inside bag number four. Um, okay, so, so far in the corner, I have uh, a small round element that feels like a minifigure head. That actually narrows it down quite a lot because we've got one of those, I think, with Rolf, the pianist, and also one with a certain, um, a certain culinary expert of the uh, Swedish variety. In fact, saying that, I've actually got some small elements down here in the corner. Uh, that's a stud, um, I think. Is it a stud? Yeah, it feels like a stud. But then I've got what feels like a little hand whisk. Um, I believe the Swedish chef comes with two of those. Uh, wood for whisking the cream. Uh, let's see what else we can find in here to confirm it. Uh, that's a, a torso. Uh, not very useful. And then, ooh, what's that? Oh, now that. That feels like a chunky piece of head or headgear. Um, yeah, I think actually what I'm feeling right now is that uh, head, which must have the moulded toque on top. He's got this white toque, uh, which is the fancy name for the uh, the chef's hat. So yeah, this really does feel like the Swedish chef. Uh, I would kind of expect to find some chickens in here, but um, actually for some reason the Swedish chef doesn't come with uh, the chickens, so he can't go bork, bork, bork. Um, yeah, I feel very confident that this is a Swedish chef. So um, the the minifigure head is going to be red. And um, yeah, I think what he's cooking up this time is some kind of tomato dish or tomato dish, depending on where you come from. So yeah, exactly that. So this is the Swedish chef. First thing I was feeling was uh, this red piece here. And I think it comes with a leaf. There we go. You can also feel for the leaf. Uh, that's some kind of Muppet uh, tomato. The other thing I was feeling for and found very quickly are these little um, whisk elements. Those are really neat. Uh, they'll just fit into the minifigure's hand. But actually, the um, really easy thing to help you feel out the Swedish chef is the head, which is, that's a fantastic mold. Uh, looks like it's triple molded, uh, but you can feel it's got this kind of bulbous head, but then this kind of weird mushroom type shape on top, which is the, uh, the Swedish chef's toque. Uh, so I'm going to put him together and uh, let the Swedish puns begin. One of my absolute favourite Muppets is the legend that is the Swedish chef. Bork, bork, bork. These sketches almost always involve the Swedish chef chasing some kind of live ingredient around the kitchen. In this case, a live ingredient is a rather cheerful looking tomato. My favourite sketches involved him chasing chickens with a cleaver. Vergoofen de Fluben Stuben mit de Bork, you betcha! At least the tomato is a custom printed element. We've got a really happy face printed onto a minifigure head. Completing this fruity little character is a pretty standard leaf element. This is quite useful for feeling out inside the bag. Also very useful and very distinctive are these hand whisks. I'm just not sure how you would use these in a recipe containing tomatoes. Lego includes a few of these inside the bag, so you're definitely going to encounter them when feeling blind bags. The other distinctive element is the Swedish chef's head complete with toque. We'll come back to that in a moment. Being quite a tall character, Lego opted for the full-size poseable legs. These are dual molded from white and blue plastic, and there's some overprinting to show where the apron stops. Overall, the Swedish chef's costume is pretty faithfully recreated. Over a blue and white striped shirt, the Swedish chef wears a simple white apron. I like the added touches, including the bow tie and the button on the shirt. The blue and white pattern continues on the arms, and I'm sure one day Lego will learn to print a side of minifigure torsos. The blue and white detail continues around the back, where we also find the strings of the apron. The head mould is truly excellent. The Swedish chef's toque makes this very easy to feel out inside the bag. It's set at a jaunty angle and moulded as an integral part of the head. Swedish chef, whose real name is unknown, doesn't have a lot of hair. But the hair that he has really stands out thanks to a triple moulded element. The face is so close to being perfect, it's spooky. 
The pursed lips and eyes hidden away under the eyebrows are absolutely superb. The Swedish chef is so iconic, he got his own breakfast cereal in 1988. Crunchy stars turned out not to be that popular and were discontinued a year later. He's an absolutely fantastic minifigure and well deserves his place in this collection. Will he make it to my top 5? We'll find out later in the video. Well, it was inevitable we were going to run into some duplicates. Bag number 5 was another Kermit, and 6 was a Swedish chef. So we are on to bag number 7, and hopefully we've got a new character here, otherwise you will never hear my voice. Um, <laughs> immediately. Actually, these, these minifigures are super easy. Um, really, really good introduction to feeling out blind bags. Um, I, immediately, I think I've got a conical flask in there, um, and that can mean only one thing. So the conical flask uh, comes with uh, Professor Honeydew, uh, what's he called, um, Bunton Honeydew. Let's have a feel around a little bit more. Um, that feels very round, I think. Yeah, that's the head. Really small round head that feels like uh, Dr. Bunton. Uh, obviously the uh, Bunton and Beaker fame. And um, I think speaking of beakers, I think the conical flask honestly is enough for me here. Uh, we got that's a torso, but yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, very distinctive. If you've ever felt a Lego conical flask, um, that's what you're looking for. It feels like almost an upside down uh, ice cream cone. Um, you've got that, but also you want to be feeling for the head. The head is round. Uh, there are some bumpy features on it for the ears, uh, probably for the nose. Yeah, you can actually feel in the bottom where the uh, the hole is for it to fit onto the minifigure. But yeah, conical flask, definitely a Bunsen. I can't wait to find Beaker. He is going to be freaking awesome. So we should see a green character in here. Yeah, there we go. There's the head that you're feeling for. Um, that, that is a stunning resemblance to the character. Uh, but yeah, quite smooth, rounded. You just got a little bit of uh, molding here for the ears. I guess the eyes with the spectacles. Uh, no pupils on this guy. Uh, but then, yeah, these really nice uh, kind of dual molded conical elements here. This is the thing you're looking for. If you find one of these, you've got Bunsen. <laughs> Welcome again to Muppet Labs. Our next guest is of course Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, PhD, Esquire, in Comp, C-S-I-C-O-E, Chief Scientist in Charge of Everything. Dr. Honeydew is known for his crazy inventions. These have included a gorilla detector, exploding clothes, edible paper clips, a banana sharpener, hair growing tonic, and a machine that can turn gold into cottage cheese. Instead of anything cool, Lego have given us a conical flask. At least this is a unique colour and only comes with Bunsen. Bunsen is usually upstaged by his more popular assistant, Beaker. Me, 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 me. These guys make quite the double act. Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, as you might expect, is named after a Bunsen burner. Honeydew comes from the shape of his head, which is almost the same as a sweet melon. Dr. B stands on medium poseable legs, which are overprinted to show the front of his lab coat. There's also some printing on the feet for his shoes. Bunsen wears a lab coat with pens in his pocket over a suit, shirt and tie. Unusually for a collectible minifigure, there's no printing around the back. The watermelon shaped head is everything you could need it to be. The rounded features, reminiscent of a baby, are perfectly rendered. Having no pupils, Bunsen's eyes are picked out only by the frames of his glasses. These are printed rather than dual moulded and you can just make out the outlines of the paint. I don't think Bunsen's going to be the most popular Muppet from this collection, but in 2004, an internet poll sponsored by the BBC and the British Association for the Advancement of Science voted Beaker and Dr. Honeydew, Britain's favourite cinematic scientists, beating Mr. Spock. But as 50% of a popular double act, I think he deserves his place here. Next, we've got bag number eight, and we're searching out character number six. So let's see what we've got here. We've got the leaflet, uh, that's the base plate. Then, what's this? That's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's kind of an odd-shaped Lego element, but it's quite chunky. It's like it's, uh, you know, one stood thick. Um, 
I've got my ideas here. Yeah, there's a there's an anti stud at the bottom, and there's a stud up on top, and then it's kind of flared out. We've got some uh, almost like arches or curves on there. I think I know what that might be, uh, but let's have a feel around. This will actually help. So actually, what I can feel in here is a minifigure head, and keeping in mind. These guys all have molded heads. There are no minifigure heads in here. They're all custom molded because these guys are Muppets and that's what Muppets do. Um, so now I found the real head. I'm just trying to find the, uh, the hole in the bottom of it, which is, um, I'm so, yeah, there it is. So I'm so, so sure I know what I'm talking about here. Um, so what we got? is firstly I've got a minifigure head which could either be Rolf or it could be a Swedish chef. Um, but what I'm also feeling is this element here which is the uh, bust of Mozart that sits on his piano. Um, really distinctive, that's actually really easy to feel. So actually what I could feel for also is the sheet music which is uh, a cover of a book and I think actually the there possibly is a 1x2 tile in here. Uh, I will just have a quick feel, see if I can find that. Um, in fact, there is the book cover. Um, this might be printed actually, so it may not have... Yeah, uh, yeah it's probably one part. Anyway, I'm happy with the, uh, the piece from the bust of Beethoven and the minifigure head. Uh, I think we've got enough to be going on with here, so let's prove that this is Rolf. It should be brown. Definitely Rolf. Um, yeah, so this is the um, the book cover. Usually this comes in, uh, I think, two different parts, or two separate parts, and it forms a Lego book, but actually Lego's managed to print this really nicely. We've got some sheet music on there, which is, uh, you know what, I really can't read this. Um, I can just make out Ludwig van Beethoven, which is, of course, Rolf's favorite composer. The head is quite distinctive. Uh, you can feel the ears. Uh, there's a hole in the bottom where it fits on the minifigure body. But the thing you're really feeling for is the, uh, the bust of Beethoven, which sits on the piano. Really nice, actually. It's got two different expressions, a uh, sleeping Beethoven and then um, an awake Beethoven. Really unusual piece here, almost like a Lego architecture piece for the plinth, for the uh, great composer. And then the hair, which actually, that looks like the hair that comes with nearly headless Nick. Um, really nice, but yeah, Rolf the, uh, the pianist. I think one of the oldest Muppets in the series. So let's put him together and we'll take a closer look. <laughs> And so here we have Rolf the dog, the resident pianist from The Muppet Show. Rolf is one of the oldest Muppets and appeared as a cast member of The Jimmy Dean Show from 1963 to 1966. He also appeared in Purina Dog Chow commercials from 1962. One of the accessories you can feel inside the bag is this printed piece of sheet music. It's actually printed on the cover of a Lego book element. Now I have the right equipment, I can actually read it. Sonata number no. 8, Pathetic, Second Movement by Ludwig van Beethoven. This is actually a reference to a sketch featuring Rolf playing said tune while a bust of Beethoven sitting on top of his piano falls asleep. I love that Lego has picked up on that specific sketch and included a brick built recreation of the bust with Rolf. The T shaped element on which Beethoven's head sits is very distinctive to feel inside the bag. I thought I recognised the hair from Nearly Headless Nick, but I was mistaken. You'll actually find this on Doc Brown from the LEGO Dimensions Back to the Future set. Just like the sketch on The Muppet Show, the bust has a tendency to fall asleep. It's a really, really nice reference. Rolf himself is a pretty straightforward minifigure. He stands on full-size poseable legs with a little bit of overprinting to give the illusion of fur and claws. That subtle printing continues on the front of the torso and also around the back, but not on the arms. Actually, scratch that, there is printing on the arms. The dual molded head bears a very good likeness to the character from The Muppet Show. The trademark ears are beautifully molded with lots of detail for the fur. The eyes and nose are printed on, and Lego has actually done quite a good job of this. The black of the nose and mouth is not perfect, but it's not too bad. Unlike other early Muppets, Rolf had live hands. That's what allowed him to play the piano. Muppets like Kermit used a hand to operate the mouth and a stick to operate the hands. 
being a cross between a marionette and a puppet, that's how they got the name Muppets. I can't pretend I was overly excited about getting Rolf in this set of Muppets, but I really do like what LEGO did by recreating the sketch with Beethoven. Nice job, LEGO! OK, so we're halfway there, and I'm living on a prayer that we're going to find the rest. I have actually uh, now checked off all of the ones we've got so far, so uh, let's have a feel around in this bag and see what we've got. This feels a little lightweight compared to some of the others, so let's have a feel around for some big elements. Uh, I've got some small movable legs in there. OK, so one of the shorter characters. Uh, I've got a leaflet, I've got a base plate, and then what is this? OK, well that's interesting. I've got an element here which feels like it's got uh, an anti-stud on the bottom, and then maybe a head, maybe a tail, maybe a chicken. Um, yeah, that feels like a chicken. And one of these Muppets has a girlfriend called Camilla. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's only one of these with a chicken because the uh, the Swedish chef didn't come with the hurdy gordy put the chicken in the pot. Uh, it actually came with a tomato. So what I'm feeling for now, and I think I've just found, is kind of a round piece. So yeah, you can see it there. And yeah, very distinctive head. This is going to be Gonzo, um, occasionally referred to as Gonzo the Great or the Great Gonzo. And you can actually feel the curved nose on the front of the head. And I guess if I feel up top, yeah, there's going to be a tuft on top of the head there. So this, without question, is going to be Gonzo. Uh, you can feel this nose here, very distinctive. And then the chicken, which is going to be Camilla, his girlfriend, in the bag. So uh, yeah, I'm very, very sure this is going to be Gonzo. Uh, let's cut him open and see how he looks. So we should have a, a very gaudily dressed Gonzo here. And yes, we do. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff. It's all rubbish, trash. There's a base plate. Uh, so the things we're feeling for, you want to be feeling for the chicken element. You can feel the anti stud in the bottom there, and then the head and the tail. Really nicely moulded little piece this with some actually really good uh, authentic printing. But actually the thing really uh, points out Gonzo is this head. Notice the hooked beak here. Uh, very, very distinctive inside the bag. We've got this kind of round head with this hooked beak, which is a very distinctive uh, feature of Gonzo. But then look at this. Uh, we've got this really cool uh, shirt and tie ensemble. Very loud. And um, yeah, this is, this is going to be fantastic. Um, anyway, I will put Gonzo together and we shall take a closer look at him. <laughs> Is it a bird? Is it a bug? All I'll say is if you want to know, be careful how you Google Gonzo. Or the great Gonzo as he's known on stage. Gonzo himself identifies as whatever. Gonzo is the resident daredevil performance artiste on The Muppet Show. He comes with one accessory, his chicken girlfriend Camilla. Thankfully I rescued her from the Swedish chef. Camilla is an exclusive moulded element and very useful for feeling out inside the bag. The printing is right for the character, but does get a little bit rough when you take a close-up look. I'm not convinced the blue is in the right place. Camilla is the love of Gonzo's life, although he can often be seen chasing other chickens. Well, you know, they all look the same. Gonzo, on the other hand, is entirely unique. The same can be said for his dress sense. He stands on medium poseable legs which have an interesting printed design. The belt seems to have some kind of Aztec print which we last saw in the early 90s. The feet are overprinted with what look like sandals, and the flecked trousers are not exactly the height of fashion. Equally unfashionable, check out the chili pepper design on the shirt. It pairs delightfully with the spotty tie. The chili pepper design continues on the sleeves of the shirt, and there's more capiscum craziness around the back. Gonzo's performance art usually ended up with him getting booed off the stage. A great example is when he tried to eat a tyre to the music Flight of the Bumblebee. The standout feature, as it is for most of these Muppets, is the moulded head. This looks to be dual moulded from lilac and blue plastic. The hooked beak is especially recognisable, not only from a visual perspective, but also for feeling out inside the bag. As with the real thing, Gonzo is plumed with a crown of feathers. The childlike innocence and never-ending desire to entertain really comes through in the face. Some of the detail for the eyes is printed on, but LEGO has done a really nice job of this. 
In later life, Gonzo, along with girlfriend Camilla, became a travelling plumber. But for me, he shall forevermore be known as the Great Gonzo. He's a cracking addition to the collection and definitely a contender for my top five. Okay, seven down and five to find. We are on to bag number ten and let's see what we've got in here. Uh, that's a torso piece, they all feel the same. Base plate, uh, we've got the leaflet there and then what? This feels a little bit different. Um, mm, okay, interesting. So th this feels a little bit like the uh, the banjo that we've got with Kermit, except this is a different shape, um, which is a giveaway. You do have to be really careful not to confuse uh, a certain person from the band Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem and uh, Kermit with the round banjo. So I just want to feel out one more piece, and there is actually uh, quite a large piece of headgear in here. In fact, a very large piece of head here. It's really chunky inside the bag. I love that word. Uh, so, Janice is the name of the lead guitarist and the vocalist in Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, which is the house band in The Muppets. And yeah, I can feel uh, we've got a really big piece of headgear, loads of hair on here. And I am very, very certain, especially with the, uh, the guitar element. Just feel for it and um, let, me, let me feel this out again. So, as you can see, very distinctive guitar shape. Uh, the body of it is kind of uh, scalloped. You can feel it. It feels like a guitar and not round like Kermit's banjo. So, yeah, this is definitely going to be Janice from Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. And uh, probably one of the, um, I won't say lesser known, but less popular minifigures from this series. Uh, let's get rid of all that stuff. So, what we're feeling for, first of all, is this. This is Janice's guitar, and it is the archetypal kind of uh, Stratocaster um, or Telecaster, I guess, even uh, shape. Uh, it is not banjo shaped, which is round, and this is really easy to feel out inside the bag. But then, to be absolutely sure, you want to be feeling for a large head in there. It feels very, very different to Kermit the Frog, and uh, as you can see, we've got lots of hair on here, so you can feel it, uh, you know, it's quite a long piece. Uh, actually really nicely moulded, that's moulded out of at least three different colours of plastic. Great printing on there. But we will put Janice together, uh, probably team her up with uh, Animal later, and we shall take a closer look at her. Next up we have hippie valley girl Janice. She's a lead guitar player and occasional vocalist for the Electric Mayhem. Totally groovy, for sure. Her accessory is this sweet guitar which reminds me of a Fender Telecaster. The body is really nicely moulded and comes with metallics for the pickups, dials and whatever that thing is called where you plug in the lead. There's even some really nice metallic printing for the strings and the tuning pegs. When you're feeling bags it's easy to get confused between Kermit's banjo and Janice's guitar. Just take your time and remember the banjo is the round one, otherwise you'll end up with a bunch of Janice's and that's not groovy. Although this is a new print, the mould has definitely been used before. Note that it says 2012 and incorporates a peg on the back. The peg allows the minifigure to grip the body of the guitar, and the other hand can grip the neck. It's a neat design. Janice, being a hippie girl from the Sunshine State, does seem to have spent rather a lot of time in the sun. It makes her this interesting orange colour. She stands on full-sized poseable printed legs, although if I'm honest, the printing on the shoes is totally not groovy. For sure. They are dual moulded from orange and blue plastic, and I like the way the belt feeds through the loops on her shorts or skirt. Moving up to the torso, Janice is wearing a pink crop top complete with necklace. It's a nice little blue number and likely something she picked up at a hippie market. The printed design continues around the back, but it's rather distracting how the orange of Janice's skin suddenly turns into pink. Once again, the moulded head is absolutely stunning. It incorporates Janice's head, hair and hat. One of Janice's best known features are those massive eyelashes which are printed on in black. She also has very generously applied lipstick and a big pout, not unlike some of the people I see in my local wine bar. Janice's beach blonde hair is recreated perfectly in this triple moulded head element. She even has a hat with printed design which matches her necklace. While it's nice to get a couple of members of the Electric Mayhem, I can't help but feel a little short changed. Yeah, yeah, we're Dr. Teeth! 
Janice is another one of the characters I wasn't really excited to see in this collection. But I've got to say, in recreating this character, LEGO has absolutely knocked it out of the park. Like, wow! Well, unsurprisingly, we're starting to run into some duplicates. Bag number 11 was another Janice, and bag 12 was a duplicate animal, which is never a bad duplicate to get. He's possibly one of my favourites here. So let's see what we've got inside bag number 13, and it may be a duplicate. We may be cutting this from the video, but um, let's see what we've got. Um, OK, uh, well, first of all, I've got what feels actually you can feel there's a ridge in the uh, the binding here I guess uh, this actually feels like a book like a Lego uh, book cover uh, so it could be Rolf uh, because we do get one of those with the sheet music on but let's have a feel around um, in fact the, the head feels almost uh, a little bit like a little bit like Rolf um, let's see what else we could find in here just to be sure probably going to be another Rolf but if it is uh, we will have one of those Mozart pieces of yeah, Beethoven, that's it. It was Beethoven on top of the piano, not Mozart. Okay, I found something. I actually found what feels like another half of the book. So here, you can actually see there's a hinge on the edge of this. Uh, so this must fit together with the other piece I was feeling a moment ago. And there's actually two studs on the inside. So I expect there will probably be a 1x2 piece in here as well, uh, just to complete what I think is going to be a laptop computer, um, which I really don't understand because they weren't invented when, uh, when I used to watch the Muppets. Um, certainly not the Muppet show. I'm sure there's a later reference to this, but let's have a look. So uh, what we can see on the sheet, I think we're looking at this guy, which is going to be either Waldorf or Statler. I can't remember which one's which. Uh, and yeah, nothing here is going to tell me. So uh, we've got the, the uh, kind of book cover piece here, which has got some printing on there, which says scooter. And then we've got the bottom piece, which has a large hinge, which I was just feeling. And there should be a one by two in there as well which I'm pretty, ah, in fact, there it is. Yeah, feel that, see it, yeah, seal it, uh, see it. That's a one by two tile. That's probably gonna have a QWERTY keyboard on it. So it is gonna be either Waldorf or Statler. I can't remember which one's which. Uh, I'll look it up in a minute, uh, just to be sure. And uh, obviously we'll refer to him as the correct name later in the video. Um, so yeah, there we go, there we go, perfect. So. Firstly, look at that head. That is absolutely fantastic. It's one of the heckling duo uh, who sit in the uh, like the royal box above the Muppets and uh, yell things at them as they're performing badly. But the thing that you're going to really want to feel for here uh, is this computer. And I'm going to have to find out what this is a reference to. So basically, we've got a keyboard, a one by two piece. Uh, might not be the only character with one of those. In fact, I think Beaker has one of those as well. So don't feel for that too much. But if you're finding the book cover, as you can see here, it's got a scooter printed on it, who is mysteriously missing from this lineup of minifigures. And that clips together to make a scooter laptop. Um, so yeah, you can feel for a kind of weird shaped head, uh, but also this, this these laptop parts, uh, those are those are what you want to feel for, uh, for either Waldorf or Statler. I'll figure out which one it is in just a second. So finally we come to the first of the cantankerous heckling duo, Waldorf and Statler. Both of these guys are named after famous New York hotels. If you've visited New York by train and stepped out of Penn Station, you'll probably recognise the Hotel Pennsylvania. This was originally known as the Hotel Statler and was operated by Ellsworth Statler. If you haven't seen this iconic building, it's currently being demolished. It will soon be replaced by Pen 15, definitely not penis, a 56 story super tall skyscraper. Statler's accessory is this laptop computer which comes in three separate parts. It's essentially a Lego book with a front and back cover. There's a printed part which shows Scooter on the laptop screen. This could be a reference to one of the later Muppet series. I certainly don't remember anybody having a laptop in the 1970s. Snapped inside the book, we have a 1x2 tile which forms the keyboard. This is the only 1x2 tile in the Muppet series, so feel with confidence. 
The other part of the book which incorporates the hinge is also very useful for feeling out inside the bag. Why we have a laptop looping in scooter on a conference call, I do not know. If you do, I'd love you to let me know in the comments. The likeness of Statler is captured beautifully in minifigure form. He's wearing a three-piece suit complete with shirt, tie, vest and jacket. The legs are full-sized adult posable legs complete with printing for the shoes. Around the back, no printed detail on the torso. But who needs fancy printing on the torso when we have this fabulous head mould? It's dual moulded out of flesh and light grey coloured plastic which gives it great contrast. This leaves absolutely no ink bleed around the ears. The eyes are positively piercing and borderline maniacal. These are printed on but the execution is pretty darn good. I especially like Statler's grey monobrow. Other details including the nose and the chin are beautifully rendered. Given that we were talking about Pen15 earlier, the chin is quite appropriate. Statler is such a great minifigure, but on his own, he's like having Garfunkel without Simon, or Andrew Ridgely without George Michael. I guess we'd better try and find a Waldorf. Moving swiftly on, this is bag number 14, and we're searching for the remaining three characters. So let's have a feel around in here. It's a little bit thin. Um, we've got some full-size minifigure legs, I think. Uh, there's a leaflet in there. They're never useful. Um, and then what is that? What is that? It's weird. Oh, I, I think there's something stuck to the uh, the actual <laughs> base plate in there. And yeah, that, that felt very strange. I've actually got a small part here. Uh, it's got anti stud on the bottom. Actually, some space inside it. And then almost like a handle. Uh, I wonder if this is a cup, uh, which would really help us actually. Um, so what else have we got? We've got to be sure of that. That feels like the same thing. Nope. Oh, uh, that might be, um, might be a saucer to go with the cup. A very weird feeling element. It's got an anti-stud on the bottom there, stud on the top. Um, I think I've already got an idea of what this could be. Uh, so, here's another distinctive piece you can feel for. Uh, we have a, squeeze that a little bit. We've got a two by two plate. Uh, you can tell it's a, uh, in fact it's not a plate at all, it would have studs on it if it was a plate. It is a tile, this will be a printed element. And the printed element I think it's gonna be uh, is a two by two printed tile with the word Z on it as in I'm going to sleep. Um, then we've got a head. Yeah, that's a kind of rounded head. So what I think we've got here is, I think we've got the uh, the other half of Waldorf and Statler. Um, and this is gonna be Waldorf. Now I can tell because uh, you've, you've got, I think actually there's a couple of these in the bag. I was feeling another one. So we've got this cup and the saucer, which is the weird element I was feeling. And then this two by two tile, which is printed and just scanning over this. This, Yeah, this is the only character with that two by two tile, uh, which makes it quite easy. And then we've got this kind of round head um, and you'll feel his mustache and hair on there. So yeah, this is going to be Waldorf, part of the heckling duo uh, who always yell at the Muppets and uh, hold them to account for their shoddy performances. So here we go. Yeah, perfect. Waldorf. Uh, so, what we're feeling for, in fact, we've got a few of these. Let me uh, let me show you this uh, a little bit closer. So, these are cups, very distinctive. You can feel the anti stud on the bottom. You can feel the space within, and then you can feel the uh, the handle, which is the perfect size to fit inside a minifigure's hand. And then they fit on top of these saucers. It's really nice that we get doubled up on these. Uh, so yeah, the saucer is also quite a distinctive element. So you can feel it's round. You've got the stud on top, anti-stud on the bottom. Um, you also have to confirm it, this sign, which shows that uh, Waldorf is presumably unhappy with the show. And then finally, we've got the head, which isn't particularly distinctive to feel out inside the bag. Uh, but yeah, it helps you a little bit. It's kind of round. Feels almost a little bit like uh, Dr. Beaker, not Dr. Beaker, uh, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew. Uh, so yeah, definitely feel for the cups and the little sign with Z's. So I'll get this guy put together and let's take a closer look at him. <laughs> Well, 
the timing could not be better, and finally we can reunite Statler and Waldorf. These guys have been around since the beginning and first appeared in the 1975 pilot of The Muppet Show. You may know them better as the two old guys in the balcony. Waldorf, like his heckling counterpart, is named after a famous New York hotel. In this case, it's the Waldorf Astoria, a 41-story Art Deco building built in 1931. It has 1,416 rooms and is currently closed for renovation. You've heard of a Waldorf salad? Well, that's named after the hotel and definitely not the Muppet. Waldorf and Statler are well known for judging acts with extreme prejudice. Occasionally, this involves using scorecards. Waldorf comes with one of said cards, this time annotated with the word Z. The 2x2 tile is exclusive to the character and is the only 2x2 in the set, which makes it good for feeling. The other accessory is a cup and saucer. In fact, we get two of each. These are separate elements, so it's a good idea to become familiar with what you're feeling for. Like his slightly taller, heckling counterpart, Waldorf is dressed in a business, or you could say dinner suit. Reflecting his shorter stature, we have the medium-sized poseable legs. It's difficult to see, but these are overprinted with black shoes. His suit is a slightly less formal brown colour, but still three pieces. There's nice printed detail for the white shirt and white spotted red tie. Again, and unusually for a collectible minifigure, there's no printing around the back. But who cares when we have another intricately moulded head? This is also dual moulded with white hair which Waldorf seems a little bit too tall for. Like Statler, the moulding is exquisite. Again, we have a dual chin configuration, except this time one is above the other. I also really like the detail in the white moustache. The eyes, partially open, are beautifully printed. It helps that these two characters are probably the most humanoid of the Muppets. The proportions of minifigure parts are really well suited, and the end result is brilliant. Man, that was a lot of duplicates, and I can't remember them all, so let me refer to my notes. Bag number 15 was a Gonzo, 16 was a Statler, 17 was a Waldorf, 18 was Miss Piggy, and 19 was Bunsen, so on to the next duplicate. Let's see what's inside this bag. Uh, ooh, oh, that's interesting. Um, straight away, I've got an interesting element. Um, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's kind of long and thin, but then we've got oh, almost like a something spiky on top. Big round piece on the front and an anti stud on the bottom. I think I've got an idea who this might be. Me, 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 me. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and feeling down in the bottom here, I've immediately happened upon um, an element. So, as you can see here, we've got kind of rectangular base here. Um, I think this is a walkie-talkie, although the uh, the aerial feels quite long. Uh, yeah, we've got an aerial sticking out of it, definitely part of the same piece with a, a bump, not a bump, a uh, kind of um, end on it. Uh, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I think we're, we're dealing with uh, Dr. Bunsen's uh, assistant, Beaker. Me, 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 me. And um, yeah, he comes with this remote control unit or whatever this thing is, uh, but also a very, very distinctive head. This is nothing like a minifigure head. Not that any of these have minifigure heads by any stretch, um, but actually the head is very, very distinctive. You can see it's kind of uh, uniformly, uh, almost like a cylinder. Then you've got this round nose on the front and then this shock of red hair. And literally, yeah, shock because this guy is always getting shocked. Um, and then you've got the uh, the walkie-talkie in there. Now, ah, there it is. What I was gonna say as well is I think this is one of the uh, one of the few characters with a one by two uh, tile in there. That is gonna be the, uh, the front of this piece of scientific apparatus, uh, which Beaker is using. I I'm really excited to see this minifigure. So let's get Beaker out of the bag and see how he looks. The head mold has to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so here he is. Um, and honestly, yeah, the head is probably gonna be what you'll want to feel for. It's kind of cylindrical. Uh, you've got the uh, the flap for the, uh, the mouth here. You see the, the mouth kind of just flaps open and springs shut, I guess, on the Muppet. Uh, you've got the nose there, which you can feel through the bag. And then this shock of red hair. Uh, how are you going to confirm that you've got Beaker? Is really down to 
uh, the the walkie-talkie element, which is a new walkie-talkie element. These have been around for years in LEGO City, but this is a new design by the looks of it. And you can actually snap on this one really nicely printed uh, one by two printed tile, uh, which you can also feel inside the bag. Just don't confuse it with um, Waldorf or Statler, whichever one had the, uh, I think it was Statler who had the one by two. But honestly, for Beaker, uh, you just feel out that head and you are golden. And here he is, one of my favourite Muppet characters, Dr. Bunsen's assistant, Beaker. In season one of The Muppet Show, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew worked alone. But in season two, that dynamic changed forever with the addition of his faithful assistant, Beaker. Me, 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 me. In the interest of scientific research, Beaker has been shrunk, cloned, punched, deflated, zapped, turned invisible, and blown up. This might explain why he seems to exist in a state of perpetual fear. His accessory is a piece of scientific equipment which looks a little bit like a walkie-talkie. The meter, which is off the scale, should probably be cause for concern. This is printed on a 1x2 tile which is useful for feeling inside the bag. Just don't confuse it with the keyboard from Statler's laptop. The tile is attached to what appears to be a new style walkie-talkie element. It's quite different to the more familiar walkie-talkie from earlier themes. Compared to Dr. Honeydew, Beaker has quite a height advantage. This is due in part to the full-size adult poseable legs which have some really nice printing. They are moulded from light grey and lime green plastic and have overprinting for Beaker's protective laboratory shoes. That printing continues from the legs up onto the torso. Beaker wears a rather fashionable lime green suit complete with green shirt and tie. Continuing a familiar theme, there is no printing on the back of the torso. The same can be said for the plain arm design. But check out that head mould, it is magnificent! The action used to animate Beaker's mouth is very simple. LEGO has done a really nice job of recreating the flappy action. The dual moulded headpiece has a very vibrant and textured mop of red hair. In fact I say it's dual moulded, but look at the clarity of the eyes and the nose. This thing is an absolute masterpiece of injection moulding. I'm guessing the pupils were actually printed on, but they are very good. After seeing some pretty ropey quality control among these minifigures, Beaker is quite the opposite, and being a fan favourite, I'm really pleased that LEGO went the extra mile. So we're very, very nearly there, and we're looking for the last minifigure. Uh, bag number 20 was a duplicate, that was a Rolf. Bag number 21 was a Beaker, and we are looking for the final minifigure. So let's see if it's in here. Uh, we've got some legs, we've got some long legs, actually. Um, what else have we got? Oh, that's interesting. Um, it feels almost like an ice cream cone. Um, I don't think it is. It's, it's quite thin. Uh, might be a microphone. Feels a little bit like a Lego microphone. Let's let's see what else we can find. Uh, we've got a bar. Let me show you that pinch through the bag. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a three stud long bar, and that does actually narrow things down quite quite a bit. There's a torso piece. Uh, obviously, we've got legs again. I'm really looking for something to help me. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, we've got a microphone. We've got that three long bar again. And yeah, a round piece. So this is one of those, uh, you know, one of the, uh, the smallest satellite, smallest dishes that Lego do. Almost like a satellite dish, you can see it's round here. Uh, you can make out the shape of it through the bag. Um, yeah, these are elements we're familiar with. Uh, you also get one of these with animal, but I'm not feeling any large, chunky, round pieces in here. And also, animal doesn't come with those, uh, ooh, I was gonna say those three, length, uh, three long uh, bar pieces, but actually, what I've just found, which is a very easy way to find this character, is uh, this curved element here. Feels a little bit like a boomerang, uh, but it's more rounded. It is a banana. And uh, this is gonna be Waka Waka Waka. Uh, it's gonna be our final character. It's gonna be Fozzie Bear. 
So if you take a look at um, what he looks like on the sheet here, you're going to firstly see this banana. You're also going to see there's several different elements to this microphone stand. And I think there's some spares in the bag. In particular, you can feel a microphone. Feels a little bit like a minifigure sized ice cream. Uh, but the banana is a real giveaway. If you find that, you've definitely found Fozzie Bear. So I am expecting to see uh, lots of brown elements come out of this bag. Let's uh, make sure we've not had any uh, mess ups so far. And actually leaving the banana in the bag. So yeah, absolutely. This is Fozzie Bear. Uh, waka waka waka, the uh, in-house comedian uh, who's really not funny. So what we're feeling inside the bag. Uh, firstly, I was feeling this uh, like three length, uh, I guess you call this a bar. So I call it three length because it's the length of three studs, just in case you're ever wondering uh, how you measure the length of these. They are you know, literally the length of studs. But the banana, the banana really identifies Fozzy. He's the only character with one of these. Uh, presumably he thinks banana skins are funny uh, because he's not a very good comedian. Uh, but also, I said these things felt like ice cream cones. These are microphones. Uh, there's actually two of them in the bag. You get one of these to uh, act as a holder for the microphone also. And um, yeah, this is Fozzy Bear. So let's put this guy together and we will take a closer look at him. And so finally we complete the set with Fozzie Bear, possibly the favourite character of Waldorf and Statler. Fozzie is always telling terrible jokes, but he's just trying so hard you've got to love him. Fozzie appears to be wearing no clothes whatsoever, except a necktie and a hat. The legs are full-sized, poseable, and overprinted with fur, a little bit like Ralph. Notice that Fozzie doesn't wear any shoes. Why should I? I'd still have bare feet! Waka waka waka! The torso printing does unfortunately have some bleed on the black. Otherwise it does a good job of recreating Fozzie's necktie and also has the fur detail. That furry detail can also be seen on the printed arms and on the back of the torso where we also see the back of the tie. Fozzie Bear's accessories include a banana which he likes to use as a pretend telephone and a microphone stand made of four different elements. These and the banana make Fozzie Bear very easy to identify. Equally identifiable is Fozzie Bear's catchphrase. Waka waka waka! Unfortunately some of the printing on this minifigure is about as refined as Fozzie Bear's jokes. Luckily the moulding is a little bit more professional. We have Fozzie's trademark hat and the detail for the ears is brilliant. The rest of the printed detail wouldn't get such a high rating on Waldorf and Statler's scorecards. Fozzie, as a classic cast member of The Muppet Show, definitely deserves his place in this collection. I just wish LEGO had taken a little bit more care over the production standards. So that was my ultimate LEGO minifigure blind bag field guide and let's be honest, fanboy meltdown for The Muppet Show! Yay! These guys were a huge part of my childhood and I absolutely love the minifigure series. But which of these 12 awesome marionette puppet combos made my top 5? Sorry Janice! It was a really tough decision but here are my top 5, chosen with a little help from Baldorf and Statler. These guys, whilst awesome in their own right, did not make the grade. Fozzie Bear, Beaker, Animal, Gonzo and the Swedish Chef did make the grade. In fifth place is everybody's least favourite comedian, Fozzie Bear. Waka waka waka! Coming in fourth is many people's favourite Muppet, but not my favourite minifigure from the series. It's Bunsen's ever-suffering assistant, Beaker. Me 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 me! Cooking up a third place finish is the Swedish Chef. Bork, bork, bork. In second is everybody's favourite performance artist, complete with their girlfriend Camilla, it's Gonzo the Great. And that means only one thing. Animal win! Animal win! I did promise to check the box distribution and can confirm that each box of 36 contains three Rolf the Dog, three Professor Bunsen Honeydews, three Beakers, me me me, three Gonzos, Three Kermit the Frogs, three Miss Piggies, three Fozzy Bears, waka waka waka, three Animals, Animal Play Drums, three Waldorfs, three Statlers, three Swedish Chefs, bork, bork, bork. and three Janices. 
I hope you found my Lego Muppet Show blind bag field guide useful, entertaining, and maybe even a little nostalgic. If you made it to the end, please don't forget to drop me a like and subscribe for more sporadically unpredictable videos in the future. Also check out my Instagram, at Jeremy Herbert Official, where I occasionally drop a post to compensate for my lack of YouTube videos. Above all, thanks a million for checking out the video, stay safe, and animals say bye!